everyone, it's me, Sam. If you did not see me in the earlier video, what's in the bag, um, I am a camp instructor here for Arts for Lawrence Summer Camp. So welcome to week one of our arts camp. Uh, we have a lot of good stuff planned for you guys and I'm excited to get started, so let's do it. For this week, style and design is our theme. So we're gonna be going and thinking through all the different possibilities we can come up with uh, using our imagination and using our individual styles to complete projects in our own unique ways. So for today's uh, project, which is the Marty Cooper uh, pictures on photos, uh, you are going to need the following items from your bag. All right, you need your little cup with some water. You're gonna need your scissors, your pencil, and if you forgot, uh, you can sharpen it. Uh, there's a little sharp in there, in there for you. It could be green or red. I have mine already sharpened to go. Go into your markers with all the colors and just pull out the black one. That's all you're gonna need. A paintbrush and your glue. So I'm gonna leave the lid on the glue until we're completely ready um, because we wanna make sure we don't let it dry out. Um, same thing with the brush. When we do use the glue, I'm just warning you now, you wanna make sure when you're done, we wash off this really well because we want to use it for later things with our paint. So again, uh, those are the things we're going to need, as well as your folder, okay? So before we actually get started in what you need in your folder, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about Marty Cooper. Uh, he is not someone that I was very familiar with before working for camp, but he has some cool stuff going on. So instead of just having me talk it out to you, I thought I would actually have you guys watch and show you what Marty Cooper is all about. Uh, I hear some birds, so maybe I'll draw a bird. So a lot of my characters look kind of like have the empty brain look in their face. I think it's funny. Got the uh, way down. I flip the cell over onto the other side so that I can draw over all the lines. And then when you flip it back over, the paint is behind the lines. My characters have a life farther beyond the life that I could ever give them. They go travel to different countries. You flip it over and then the lines are on the front and the whiteout makes a solid character. All right, now we've got this little bird. Now we can go find somewhere to pick them. I'll do one where the bird's gonna get interviewed by you. Well, to animate them, I just do this like 50 more times. All right, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Pretty neat, huh? So as you can tell, like you mentioned at the end, Marty likes to work on animation. So any kind of movie or cartoon you watch, really any type of movie, or TV show works with a storyboard. So for those of you that aren't familiar, a storyboard is some kind of large paper with boxes that show bit by bit by bit what will be seen on the screen from the, uh, from the audience's point of view. So in order to make those things happen, people like Marty have to create these characters, especially ones that aren't human like you and I, um, and has to show them moving every little which way. And when you put it all together, it looks like they're actually moving on the screen. So pretty cool stuff. We're not making storyboards today, but you are actually going to make one of your own characters. Now, the reason I waited for our folder is because we're doing things a little bit differently than Marty did, um, just because we're working from home during camp this year. So you're gonna open up your folder and I want you to not on the magazine side, but I want you to take out a paper from the other side, just one paper. And then I want you from behind that paper, if you kind of go back, there's some soft tissue paper type stuff, but there's these clear sheets. I want you to take one of those out. And then whether you have an extra zoo book or magazine pages from a National Geographic, or you can use any magazine you have at home as long as you have parent or guardian permission to uh, work with it. Um, you're going to use one of those. So I'm going to use our extra zoo book here since I didn't bring any magazines from home. So you're going to take your white paper and you're going to take your pencil. I would 
recommend, and you can fold it if you need help with this, I would not make my character bigger than half of the white sheet. So I would say between a fourth, so if you want to fold it again, between a fourth and a half of the sheet is how big you should make your character, okay? Now, we want to make sure we're keeping our lines very simple, all right? And I'll explain why in a second. So kind of like Marty Cooper did with his, it's pretty much a basic outline. He has, you know, the appendages, whether they be arms, legs, wings, the eyes, the face, or the beak, whatever you prefer. I think hamsters are pretty cool, so I'm going to draw a hamster, but it doesn't have to be an animal. It can be a made-up creature. It can be a person. It can be a cartoon character. That's up to you. We're going to use our pencil lightly. We don't want to get too crazy with it. Obviously, if you make mistakes, you have that eraser on your pencil and in your uh, camp bag. But we want to make sure we're keeping it nice and light because we're going to go over it with our marker when we've decided that we're ready for that. I think my hamster, my little character, is going to kind of take over the world. That's what it looks like he's trying to do. So good for good for him. He's, he's being silly, and he, he's a tiny little guy, but he is on a mission, and it's going to look great when we've actually put it together like Marty Cooper did. Now, my character is nice and ready. I only used about a fourth of the page. Uh, again, we're you know conserving our uh, materials. But also, uh, if we want to make sure that we're doing it just like our artist did on our clear sheet, we want to leave room so that you can actually put it up to different backgrounds or you can put it up to your you know, magazine paper, a uh, picture. We want to make sure that there's enough room for some kind of cool interactions between the two mediums. Now I'm going to take my black marker and I'm just going to outline the main line. So we don't have uh, white out or white paint. Um, we wanted to spare parents and guardians of having to deal with Sharpies at home. So you could use a permanent marker um, on your clear sheet if you wanted, but just with the materials we gave you, you're still able to do this, which is what makes art so cool because you can pretty much do it anywhere with anything. I kind of have to make my, um, he's in a hamster ball, obviously, and so he's bouncing around. I'll show you here, he's bouncing around. Um, since I have just simple lines here with not any kind of the white included, I'm gonna make those um, like actual shapes. So I'm gonna go ahead and outline them. I think that's gonna look really cool. All right, so my little guy, he's, he's pretty basic, but uh, like I said, he is on a mission. So once you actually have your character outlined in black, right, we're done with that. You can go ahead and get your scissors out. Remember, we want to keep these in their little um, case as much as possible, just for safety reasons, and make sure you have a parent or guardian with you um, to use the scissors safely. And I'm just going to cut out around my little guy. So for those of you who can see, right there. And I'm just going to cut as close to the black lines as I can. So again, we're trying to get the same feel as that Marty Cooper. And so like he said, um, he would draw with the permanent marker and then on the back he would do the white out just so that way you could the white would pop through but then you would also have that outline and that's what we're trying to mimic here. Now 
And it's okay if it's not perfect. Um, we're still gonna have a lot of fun with these. I am really looking forward to doing these on my own at home. Um, because like I said, I was not familiar with Marty Cooper, but this is pretty cool. And I think it'd be really neat to work with storyboards and movies and all that kind of good stuff. So creativity is pretty cool. Again, your character doesn't have to have any kind of movement, but I thought for a little hamster, he should probably be on his way. So I worry about his owners if he's just out and about and his hamster ball bouncing around. I really worry about him. there again be really careful using those scissors if you need help ask a parent or guardian or someone maybe an older sibling to help you out especially if your character is a little small like mine i probably would have made him a little bit bigger again using up that fourth of a space so now once you have your character you're going to place him or her or it on your sheet or they you have more than one i guess um and you're going to get your glue and paintbrush and then your water cup. Mine's empty, but I will be grabbing water as soon as I'm done with this. Again, this is not like normal painting because we're using glue. So we want to make sure we're keeping the brush clean. Otherwise, the bristles will stick together and then we will be able to use it later and that'll be a bummer. So I'm going to open up my glue, which is in this little container. So looking pretty good. I'm not going to use a ton, all right? And I'm just going to, very little, and I'm just going to paint, not paint, just kind of touch the back so that we have enough adhesive on there to put on our clear sheet. So I didn't even need that much, if you, I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's like barely anything on there. Again, though, I'm gonna rinse that off really well, and I'm gonna take my character and I'm going to place them. I'm going to put mine in the bottom right, but you could place yours on anywhere in your clear sheet. And this is where it gets really fun. So I have my character and he could be back here at the theater with me. Or, which is where your zoo book, magazine, whatever you picked out, I'm going to pick out a really cool image for him to kind of uh, hang out at. So this looks pretty cool. This is a page about bats. It's on page two and three of your zoo book. And it talks about the story Dracula, which I'm an English teacher normally, and I love literature. So I'm going to use this one right here. And I'm going to place him right there. So check it out. Ding, 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 ding. I took a classic piece of literature and I decided to add a hamster to it because why not? So again, if you pick up a background that you think is just perfect like I did uh, with this Dracula painting, you can always tear out that page. Again, make sure you have permission if you're using one that's just from home, but I've seen people do this with actual pictures too. Um, so if they have like a printed picture that they're not using for anything, um, you can again walk around your house, you can use this just to see, I think it'd be kind of funny to, when I get home, put this in front of my dogs because I'm sure they're just sleeping on the couch. And I can pop that right in front of them and it'll look like they have no clue that a hamster has a lamp it throughout our house. So if you really wanted to, you could even uh, keep these two together. So again, you're picking your image. I would probably cut off her. Not that she's not cool, but I just think it'd be good for the sake of this. And then if you wanted to keep it permanently, again, I, I probably would keep mine um, separate just because you can do it for different things and it'd be fun just to kind of walk around the house or if you go on a walk around your neighborhood, bring it with you. Um, but I would just take a little bit of glue with my brush and then dab it on the four corners here and stick it down right here to there. So.